Thank you very much, Christopher, and welcome to uh, the uh, Easter celebrations here at uh, St Andrews. Uh, it's uh, not quite as bright as it was at, uh, uh, at Emmanuel uh, down the road, but as we can see the sun coming in through the windows, it is appropriate that we look at that whilst we celebrate God's Son rising from the dead. Uh, Christopher's been through the uh, communion uh, processes, but just to extend a welcome to anyone who knows and loves Jesus as Saviour and Lord to join us around his table later today. Now, can I ask you to stand as we start our worship proclaiming the good news of Easter? Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia! Alleluia! Our first song is a great hymn of praise to Jesus, our risen victorious King. If you're watching at home, sing your hearts out. But I'm afraid in church we've got to restrain ourselves for everyone else's safety. Thine be the glory, risen conquering son. Endless is the victory thou or death hast won. today. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And so, together we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through what we haven't done, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Easter Collect, Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son, overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. We turn to God's word and first to Psalm 22. We read the earlier part of this psalm last week where we read of the despair, despair picked up by Jesus on the cross. But the latter verses of the psalm that we're reading today are where David has realized God's deliverance and gives him praise. Praise that's so appropriate for us here today at Easter. So Psalm 22 starting at verse 22 on page 554 in the Bibles or in the screens. I'll read the even verses if you want to join in on the odd-numbered verses. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him, revere him all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry from help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your deliverance. We thank you that you have done it. And we ask that as we go about our lives, 
you will keep those truths in our hearts so that we can live to bring glory to your name and that of Jesus, in whose name we pray now. Amen. Amen. You remember that before Christmas, uh, before Christmas, before Easter uh, even, uh, Margaret was asking for people to record clips to make an Easter film. And we're going to watch that now.
they were angry. It wasn't nice, was it, Derek? No. And I tell you, I couldn't believe it when I realised they were angry with Jesus of all people. I mean, who knew a crowd could turn so quickly? Well, the religious leaders, they, they hardly helped matters, did they? They, they went around whispering in the crowd's ears and, and really rallying them up. Mm. Jesus is a troublemaker. Did you hear what he says? He's a liar. They say he's planning a rebellion. Son of God, that's what he said. Surely something's got to be done. Did you hear, Derek, that it was one of his own followers who betrayed him? Apparently he led the guards right to him. Aye, and then they dragged him to, to some religious court and then off the Pilate. That, that's the Roman governor in charge around this place. And Pilate, he could understand why the crowd was so upset. I don't understand. This man has done nothing wrong. He's a troublemaker. Get rid of him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate didn't know what to do, did he, Derek? No. He didn't think Jesus was guilty, but he also didn't want to anger the crowd. No, so then, well then he had a brilliant idea. He decided they would offer up a prisoner to be freed. You can either have Barabbas or Jesus. We want Barabbas. Let's hear you! Hear that, Pilate? Free Erebus. Come on, everyone. Louder! It didn't make sense. I mean, Barabbas, he had done some terrible things. Whereas Jesus, all he did was help people. You're right, Dave. I think it's safe to say Pilate's plan had backfired. He had had enough. I wash my hands of this. Do what you want with this, Jesus. And the crowd, they wanted him killed. The Roman guards, they whipped him and dragged him through the streets. Bad business. Bad business indeed. And all the while, the crowds, they jeered and mocked Jesus. They nailed him to the cross and he hung there between two common he didn't deserve that, Dave. I know I said he was a nuisance, but he never did anything to deserve that sort of punishment. There was an odd feeling all over the city when he was there hanging on that cross. Like somehow everyone knew a terrible thing was being done. And the oddest thing happened when he died. The whole city went dark. Never seen anything like it. Aye, it was unsettling all right. There were odd reports coming in all day about strange things happening over town. But eventually it went back to normal and the peace and quiet returned. Just the way I like it. Wait, wait, Derek, do you hear that? Do you hear that, Derek? What? what is that noise? He's alive! He's alive! He's alive! Jesus is alive! Jesus is alive! Right, that's it. Dave, I've had enough. That is a clear violation of the noise regulations 32, which clearly states Derek, that will you be quiet? Slow down. What are you talking about? He's alive. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. That's not possible. The men guarding the tomb have probably just moved his body. No, they haven't. The angels appeared. The guards fainted. We screamed, but the angels told us to not be afraid. Jesus had risen. Wait a second. Jesus did say that he would rise again. He did? Well then, this must be true. Let's go! He's alive! He's alive! He's alive! Would you look at that, Dave? Look at that! Disaster. Yes! A disaster, Derek. Are you serious? For goodness sake, have you not been listening to any of this? If Jesus is alive, that means all of his miracles, well, they weren't just cheap tricks. But instead, it means that he was telling the truth all along when he said that he was the Son of God and that he had come to show us the way. This, 
This is most certainly not the disaster. In fact, Derek, this is the best day ever. Come on, we have to go and tell people all about it. Come on, Derek. You're right, Dave. I'm, I'm right behind you. Just like, I need a first wee log book here now. Uh, let me see. Uh, what will I put down? I need to make sure I, I have a clear note of the running disturbance. Yes, let me just add that in. Or, yes, now. And then, uh, oh, who cares? This is too big a deal. I've got to go and tell everyone. Jesus, Jesus is alive. That's one way of telling the story of the uh, first uh, Easter. Now we listen to how Mark recorded it in his gospel. Today's reading is from the Gospel Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the, the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go. Tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You might like to open the Bible readings to see that, Bibles to see that on the page, the last chapter of, of Mark, and you'll find it starts on page 1023. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we pray that we might hear your word afresh, that your spirit might fill us afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, remember as we come to the first Easter morning that it should not have been at all surprising. Just in the Gospel of Mark, Mark's recorded that Jesus said these five things. Chapter 8, verse 31 says, then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. Chapter 9, verse 9, as they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Chapter 9, verse 31, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. Chapter 10, verse 34. They will mock him and spit upon him and flog him and kill him, and after three days he will rise again. Chapter 14, verse 28. But after I am raised up, 
I will go before you to Galilee. You would think if we were a follower of Jesus and we were not expecting the resurrection, there was something the matter with us. Anyway, Easter morning. It's dark, but not completely, completely. Light is spreading ever so slowly away in the east, the horizon, just that little bit lighter beyond the temple and the Roman headquarters next to it. Already, at this hour, some people are moving. Business doesn't start till daybreak, but three women have business of their own. They had bought some spices to honor the body of the one they loved. They had to wait because of the Sabbath. Everything stops for the Sabbath. Last night, at the end of the Sabbath, they could buy what they wanted, and now, so early on the first day of the week, they're making their way to the tomb. Remember, Jesus has been executed. Maybe his followers are at some risk. And then these are women walking around in the darkness. Not a good time for women to be on the streets. Because these women love Jesus very much, they will do what it is dangerous to, for them to do. Because they love Jesus very much, what they're going to do will also be painful for them. Do you remember how sad it is to be with the body of someone you love? But for them, nothing is too much for Jesus. It's warm in their climate in spring, Jesus has been dead for more than 36 hours. They cannot wait any longer to honor their dead leader. Bacteria get to work on the dead. Insects lay eggs and they hatch. All three of the women had watched him die on the cross. Two of them had seen him buried. They saw that great stone rolled across the tomb. And so they were asking each other as they went along, how on earth will we roll the stone away? Perhaps we'll find someone to help. They recognize the tomb in the now slightly pinkish light, an outer chamber and the inner tomb. They peer in and they see something within. Who? What? The stone has been rolled away and inside someone is waiting for them, a young man in white clothes. He doesn't seem surprised to see them, but they are very very frightened. How strange to find the tomb open when the stone should be across it. And who could this person be in the tomb? What's the man doing in Jesus' tomb? They are very worried and afraid. And afterwards, and they remember, and they tell people precisely these things because the people want to know the details, and this is how it happened, that the young man spoke to them from the right-hand side and he was sitting down. Don't be afraid, he says. Calm down. I know you are here looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He's not here. See, this is where his body was. It's empty, not there. This is what you must do. Go tell his disciples. Peter too, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. You'll see him there just as he told you already. And the women back down to the tomb. They were still very, very afraid. They fled. They ran away. They didn't call out. They didn't spread the news. They were so afraid. They couldn't say anything to anyone. They had to go straight away and tell the disciples. Now, in Jesus' ministry, often after some ministry, you might remember Jesus told people not to tell about him, to wait for the right moment. And now it's come, and even his closest followers are too scared to talk about him. You wouldn't make this up. People don't write down stories in the Bible to show that they were rather stupid and dim. They don't write down stories in the Bible to show how afraid they were. It's how they truly were. The disciples were not ready for Jesus' resurrection at all. You can't call it wishful thinking with people seeing Jesus because that's whom they wanted to see, it was totally unexpected. His disciples had deserted Jesus. We saw the chief of the disciples, Peter, was so frightened that he denied Jesus three times. And these women, Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of James and Salome, 
were so sure that Jesus was dead that they were taking spices to put on his body. I mean, we were here a few weeks ago. Maybe they hadn't heard how Jesus said he'd already been anointed with the precious nard. Jesus knew what would happen, but only Jesus. No one was expecting what Jesus had said clearly would happen. And looking down at the page, what sort of ending is verse 8 for the Gospel of Mark? Bewildered people saying nothing because they're too afraid. Shouldn't, then, shouldn't the Gospel end powerfully and triumphantly? And other people have thought it's a very strange ending as well. And maybe it made some of them think of a better ending. And there are two other endings written down, one where it says in verse 8 and another longer one. And maybe there were even other endings, but they're not in the earliest manuscripts that we have. It seems maybe Mark wanted to end it here on that note of fear. But it reminds us of three things that are good for us, three things to stop us being fearful. The resurrection happened. Failed followers can be restored and go back to the beginning. Firstly, the resurrection happened. Jesus said he would rise again to God's right hand. He was raised. And then he went to Galilee, it says, to be with his disciples. We know from another gospel that he was there amongst them for 40 days and then went away to be with God. What Jesus said would happen, happened. And that is a good reason for believing Jesus when he says he will come again. We don't expect that. There's a good reason for coming to Jesus. What he said would happen did happen. It's a good reason to coming him, to him to receive rest for our souls. That's a good reason for listening to him when he tells us how to live and that we should sacrifice our lives in this life, knowing we'll be with him in the next one. Jesus doing what he said is a good reason for trusting him. If you were one of Jesus' followers, what point would there be in being persecuted and penalized for following Jesus unless the resurrection really happened? This resurrection isn't a sensible story or a necessary story to make up. Why would anyone die for this story? But they did. You could perhaps believe that Jesus died for your sins without the resurrection. You could perhaps believe that an innocent man had suffered as some sort of example. But the really sufficient reason to worship Jesus as God is because he said he would rise from the dead, and he did. Because God in human flesh could not stay dead. Secondly, this morning tells us that failed followers can be restored. Because imagine Peter saying to everybody else, Jesus has risen, and the young man who told us said that Jesus specifically mentioned me. Go tell his disciples and Peter, me, me who failed him. Peter had wanted to follow Jesus better than everybody else. He'd wanted to be the best disciple of all, but he failed. He even swore publicly three times that he didn't even know Jesus. I do not know whether you think you have been worse than Peter or whether you think you've just been sometimes as equally disappointing as Peter is as a follower of Jesus. But there is hope. Jesus longs to see Peter back following him. He longs to see Peter continuing to believe, restored from his failures. And so if there is anybody watching or here this morning feeling guilty because they haven't been following Jesus very well, then don't think he's given up on you. He wants you back. Come back to him this morning. He died for you. He lives for you. Turn back and believe. And not just Peter. Jesus calls them all, thirdly, to go back to the beginning. Jesus gathers them back to the beginning. The message of Jesus to the disciples is, come back to Galilee. Come back to where it started. I still want you. I don't, you to for, I don't want you to forget all I've told you. I want you to remember it again. I'm still with you. 
I'm with you to the end of the age. Keep going back to when I called you. You came because I called. You deserved no promises from me, but you received everything from me as a gift. You decided to follow me, joining me, taking up your cross. And can we think back to when we became Christians? Well, keep going back to that beginning. Remember, as if Jesus says to us, I wanted you and I still do. We may often be fearful and afraid, but remember Jesus says, I want you forever. I have risen from the dead and you will be with me forever. And of course, if you haven't become a Christian yet, that is the most important thing that you could ever do. And tell me if you'd like to join an Alpha course that we're starting soon. For us, of course, COVID has been rotten with being cut off from our friends, our special places, life itself perhaps. Life is often painful, bewildering, making us afraid. But the one who calls us, Jesus, has the victory over loneliness, sadness, failure, even death. Jesus rose from the dead. They went thinking they were going to the tomb, to his dead body. But he was raised from the dead. He died for us, but he did not stay dead. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, nobody would be a Christian if you did not rise from the dead. But you did, and many are. Thank you that every sinner can turn to you because you died for our sins on the cross. Thank you that even someone who lets you down as badly as possible can come back. Thank you that you call us, each one. You invite us to follow you, and you stay with us forever. Lord Jesus Christ, praise you forever. Amen. Our next song ties together the past, the present, the future. Looking at the events we remembered on Good Friday, those we celebrate today, but looking forward to Jesus' return in glory as King and Judge. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus died and bled for me. Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears. They laid him down. by every snow, Messiah still, and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God, oh, praise His name forevermore, for
in the resurrection using words that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians. We say together, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received. And this we believe. Do take a seat. I know that Christopher isn't going to be sending out a letter this week, but I don't know, are there any notices? Uh, it hasn't all been added up yet, and there might be still some to come. But I, I think, including gift aid, that over £2,500 has been raised for... March in March for the missionaries, so that's good news. And, um, oh, yeah, there's a new green kind of card, because if you've been following the old card, we run out of sermons of where we're up to, and so we, uh, someone will perhaps hand one out on the way back out so that you know what's happening in the next months. Thank you, Christopher. It's now time for our prayers of intercession. They're going to be led by uh, Bob, but he's uh, doing it uh, remotely. So let's pray. Today is Easter Sunday. Christ is risen. Alleluia. We start our prayers by reminding ourselves what Jesus did for us in coming down to earth. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus, who came to us as a little child, one of us, flesh and blood, to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus, who came to us as carpenter, and in whose creative hands a world was fashioned. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus, who came to us as fishermen and pointed to a harvest that was yet to come. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus, who came to us as teacher and opened eyes to truths that only the poor could understand. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus, who came to us as healer and opened hearts to the reality of wholeness. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus, who came to us as prophet, priest and king, and yet humbled himself to take our place upon the cross. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus, who came to us as servant and revealed to us the extent of his Father's love for humankind. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus, who rose from the disgrace of a sinner's death to the triumph 
of a Saviour's resurrection. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Let us pray for the world situation at this time. Dear Lord, when we consider our world, we realise what a mess we've made of the perfect creation you gave to us. We see climate change causing droughts and fires and floods. We see deforestation, pollution of the land and seas, flagrant waste of the earth's resources. We see wars and fighting, poverty, maltrushed, malnutrition and hardship, greed and inhumanity. Now we see a virus pandemic threatening millions of lives across the entire world. Lord, you knew this would happen in a sinful world. And in your love you sent your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, into the world to teach about you and show mankind how to live a life of service to you. It was your plan that he would sacrifice his life as punishment for the sins of all who turn to you in repentance and faith. Today we celebrate his resurrection from death and conquest of sin. Lord, we give you grateful thanks and praising and praise you for your undeserving love to us all. We know that the solution to the world's problems lie in our seeking to serve you and follow your guidance. We pray for our world leaders and ask that you will guide them in ways of peace and justice for all people. Make them aware that any power they have comes from you and that they are answerable to you for how they use it. We pray that you will restrain all those who seek conflict and selfish greed and encourage those who seek peaceful cooperation in helping others in need. We thank you, Lord, for the work of scientists who are managing to develop vaccines to control the COVID virus and ask that you will enable cooperation in the manufacture and distribution of vaccines to the whole world, irrespective of economic status and influence. We pray particularly that you keep safe those places where there are huge camps housing refugees and poverty-stricken people, where close proximity means the virus could spread extremely rapidly. We also pray that you will restrain any powers trying to profit politically or economically from this worldwide disaster to the detriment of other people. We pray for your faithful people throughout the world, that you will enable them to make your precepts known to all with whom they have contact, that you will protect those suffering persecution for their faith, and that your name may be increasingly honoured throughout the world. We pray particularly for those who have been bereaved, those who are lonely and frightened, those experiencing financial and mental anguish, those who are sick and suffering. We ask that you will comfort them and enable them to know your presence with them, that you will empower government and voluntary agencies to provide appropriate medical and practical help, guidance and provision for their needs, and that you will guide friends to know how best to be able to support them. We pray that this Easter all your people will know the blessing and love that you shower upon us. Amen. In our missionary prayer spot this week, we remember all the missionary societies that we support throughout this country and overseas. You will know that Ruth organised the so-called March for March campaign to collect sufficient steps to walk around the world to visit all those people and countries. This proved hugely successful and that we managed to walk right past them all and beyond. However, 
The serious part was to raise funds to be able to send a bit extra to support them over this difficult 12 months. The people and organisations are shown on the slide. Levi Booth with OMF in Japan. The Brown family with CMS in Argentina doing Bible translation into the Toba language. The Hooker family with Crosslinks in Namibia working for the Eastside Baptist Church. The Parker family with MAF in Uganda flying to remote parts of Africa. Mary South with Wycliffe doing professional development with the Wycliffe Eurasia staff. Joey Kirkham working with UCCF in York and Hull universities. Barnabas working with the homeless people in Manchester. Christians in Schools Trust working in the Stockport area in primary schools. Tearfund doing relief and development work in many poorest countries. The Message Trust sharing the gospel with young people through schools work, concerts, prison work and Eden communities. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that you have called these people and families to work for you in a professional capacity in many different places throughout the world. We also thank you that you have called us as a church to help support them in prayer and financially. We ask, Lord, that you will give them clear guidance in how to carry out your work during all the problems associated with the virus and also how to proceed with your work for the future. Strengthen them with your Holy Spirit in all that they do and keep them safe in difficult circumstances. Encourage them in the knowledge that you are with them and bless many people through their ministry. We pray for the finances of these people and organisations which have been affected by the global pandemic. We ask that your people may continue to give generously to your work. We thank you for the money that has recently been raised at our churches and ask that it may be used wisely under your guidance to extend the work that they are doing for you and be effective in spreading the gospel message. We ask this in your name. Amen. We finish our prayers by joining together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we prepare to join around the Lord's table, let us remind ourselves that as we do that, we not only meet with one another, but meet with him. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and pray. It is indeed right it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you because you raised him gloriously from the dead. 
For he is the true paschal lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to you, our heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Here, as merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of my new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you through him this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not merit, weigh our merits, but pardon our offences and fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we've already shared in the Lord's Prayer, let's move forward to share in communion. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you, Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
having been fed at God's table, let's join together in this prayer of thanks. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord, amen. We've been fed from God's word. We've been fed at Christ's table. And so we're strengthened to go out into his world to declare in our words and our deeds the truth proclaimed in our final song. Christ is risen from the dead. who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia.